Have you ever started a new Microsoft Word document and then been frustrated because nothing you type looks the way you want it to? Hi, this is David with David's Tutorials, and if that question applies to you, then today I hope to make your life tons easier by explaining for you the basics of using styles in a Microsoft Word document. In today's tutorial, I'll first cover the basics of what styles are, then we'll look at the built-in styles in Word and how to use them. After that, I'll show you how we can change those built-in styles, and finally, I'll show you how you can create your own styles in Microsoft Word. Before we get into how to use styles, let's first make sure we're on the same page about understanding what styles are. When applied to writing and publishing, the word style is usually used two different ways. The first way means how you use words, punctuation, grammar, and so on. And the second way means the way the words look on the page. In other words, the two uses of style are content and appearance. Over the last couple of decades, with the evolution of web design and desktop publishing, it has become important to separate content from appearance. Word makes it very easy at separating content from appearance using styles. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will not be talking about content styles, but about appearance styles. In Microsoft Word, as well as in many other word processors and publishing programs, a name style is the collection of appearance specifications that define how you want a named style to look. These appearance specifications can include such things as font face, such as Times New Roman, Arial, Cooper Black, any of those sorts of font faces. It can include font weight, such as normal or bold face or very light. It can include font decoration, such as normal or underline or strike through or italic. It can include font color. It can include font size, font spacing or position, such as raised or lowered. It can include paragraph characteristics, such as paragraph indents, paragraph spacing between paragraph. And it can include tab stops, line spacing, background color, borders. Just about any appearance property you can name can be included in a named style. Many users of Microsoft Word, particularly newer users, use Word's tools to adjust the appearance each element has as they type it in. While this does work, it's always more efficient to use one of the existing name styles already in Word or to create your own style where you can set it up to look exactly the way you want it to look. Knowing now that a style is a named set of appearance specifications, let's take a look at the styles already built into Word. The first and most basic style used in Word is the style called Normal. This is the style that Word uses by default whenever you start up a new document. Let's explore the Normal style. By the way, this tutorial is made using the late 2018 version of Office 365. If you're using an older version or even a newer version, your mouse clicks and keyboard strokes might be a bit different, but the styles concept is valid for almost all versions of Word. We'll be using the ribbon bar in this tutorial, so if you don't see your ribbon bar, simply right click on the top line menu and uncheck the item that says Collapse the Ribbon. Next, be sure your Home menu tab is selected, then look at the panel called Styles. When you open a new document, the style named Normal should already be selected. You can tell which style is selected by the gray highlight around it. To see what specifications any style has, right-click on it and select Modify. This will bring up the Modify Style dialog. We'll touch on some of the changes you can make here later on, but for now, direct your attention to the Summary area near the bottom of this dialog box. The Summary area tells you all the specifications designated for this particular style. Since I've already made changes to my own normal style, my summary probably appears different than yours. 
Knowing that the normal style is automatically selected when you open a new document, it's time to explore some of the other styles built into Word. In the ribbon bar, on the Home tab, in the Styles panel, you'll see a selection of six or seven readily available styles. This list is called the Styles Gallery. Each style in the gallery shows a representation of what it looks like with the name of the style underneath. The gallery is simply a collection of styles, and you can define this collection that includes all the styles you want to use, and it also allows you to eliminate the distraction of having styles in there that you don't regularly use. You can see the entire gallery by clicking the drop-down arrow in the lower right corner of the gallery. At this point, it's important to note two of the types of styles used here, character styles and paragraph styles. As you probably already figured out, character styles can be applied to individual characters or to entire words within a paragraph, while paragraph styles apply to the entire paragraph. As you play around with each of them, you'll get comfortable with how each of these can be used. In the Styles Gallery, paragraph styles are designated by the paragraph symbol before the name of the style. This symbol is also called a pill crow. As you can see here, the normal and list paragraph style are paragraph styles, while the heading and strong styles are character styles. There's another type of style called the link style, which we'll touch on a bit later. An even more fun way to see what a style looks like is to use the entire Styles Gallery Preview function. To see a preview of a paragraph style, simply place your insertion cursor anywhere within a paragraph, drop down the Styles Gallery, then hover your mouse cursor over the various styles. You will see a preview of what that paragraph will look like if you apply that style to it by clicking. To see a preview of a character style, then select a word or a few characters. A quick way is to double click a word to select it. Then hover your mouse cursor over a character style and you will see what that word or character looks like when you apply the style. If there's a style in your gallery that you never use and you don't want to be distracted by seeing it in the gallery, you can easily remove that style from the gallery by right clicking on it, then selecting Remove from Gallery. If you'd like to see all the styles you have available, then you can open the Styles Manager. Do this by clicking on the small arrow at the lower right of the Styles panel. This is a toggle to open and close the Styles Manager, or you can also press the key combination Control shift alt s and this is also a toggle which will open and close the Styles Manager panel. There are a few things I need to point out in the Styles Manager, but you should spend some time here exploring it later on so you feel comfortable with what's available. The first thing you need to explore in the Styles Manager panel is the Options. Click on that Options button to bring up the Options dialog. The most important option, in my humble opinion, is the top drop-down Styles to Show. Word defaults to show only the recommended styles, which is a good thing because there will be about 20 or fewer than 20 listings from which to choose. This is manageable. If you change from showing the recommended styles to showing all styles, you will probably see more than 120 available styles. It can be interesting and fun to explore many of the styles available on this list, but for normal operations, most Word users will find the recommended styles to be enough. The next thing to note in the Styles Manager panel is the symbol to the right of the style name. As in the Styles Gallery, you will see the Pilcrow symbol, but you will also see the lowercase a and the lowercase a and Pilcrow together. Of course, the Pilcrow indicates a paragraph style, the lowercase a symbol indicates a character style, and those styles that have both the Pilcrow and the lowercase a with an underline are called linked styles and can be used either on characters or on entire paragraphs. To illustrate, we need to go back to the gallery because the hover preview does not work in the style manager. Note that the intense quote style is a linked style. We're going to use that in the preview. If we select a single word, then hover over the intense quote style, you can see that only the word changes in the preview. 
However, if we don't select any characters, but rather place our insertion cursor within the paragraph, then hover over the intense quote style, the entire paragraph changes. This is how link styles work. Now that we've got a pretty good idea of what styles are and how to select them, let's take a look at how we can change them. For our example, I'd like to use the normal style that comes with Word. Now, as you can imagine, I'm rather old school, and I was very happy with Word's normal style of several decades ago when it defaulted to look like a standard official business letter. However, in their infinite <coughs> wisdom, the designers saw fit to change the default normal style to something like you see in this example. Being old school, I didn't think this default normal style looked very professional or very businesslike, so I wanted to change it to something I like better. I also wanted my changes to apply to every new document I opened. So here's what I did, and you can use this same technique to change the appearance of pretty much any style in the list. First, I selected a paragraph designated as normal style, the old normal, the one I didn't like, and I changed the font. In this case, I changed it to Times New Roman, 14 points, black. Then I opened the paragraph settings dialog by clicking on the small arrow at the bottom right of the paragraph panel, then set the properties I wanted, which was spacing to zero, line spacing single, and I clicked OK. Finally, with the updated paragraph still selected, and here's the key, I right clicked on normal in the gallery, that being the one I wanted to change, and in the context menu, I selected update normal to match selection. Then I right clicked again and selected modify. Now this is important. If you only select update to match selection, you're only going to make the changes to normal in the existing document. If you want this set of changes to apply to all your new documents, you need to right click on normal again and select modify. Once you have the modify dialog open, then down near the bottom, select the radio button for new documents based on this template and click OK. Once you do this, then any new document you open in Word should have all of these new changes applied to the normal style. As you have already guessed, you can use this same technique to modify any of the styles already existing in Word. To make these same changes in the Style Manager panel, hover your mouse cursor over one of the styles and you'll see a drop-down arrow appear to the right of the listing. Click this arrow and you'll see the Update and Modify menu items and use them there the same as we did a moment ago. Now that we know what styles are, we know how to select and apply them, we know how to change the style so that they look like we want them to, what if we want to create an entirely new style? There will very likely be times, if you use Word much at all, when you need to create an entirely new style, such as a sidebar or a callout or something even more obscure, and you want to be able to use that style in all future documents you create. Here's an example. First, I will do a triple click, which selects an entire paragraph. I'm going to use that as my example. Next, I go to the paragraph properties, and I want to end in about one inch on the left and one inch on the right. Then I set the spacing to be 12 points before and after this paragraph. Next, I go to borders and shading and set the border color to dark red, then add a shadow border. Next, I go to options and set the border to be nine points away from the text. What this will do is this will give me some space between the border and any text that I designate in this paragraph. Back in the borders and shading area, I finally set the shading of the paragraph to be, oh, let's give it light orange. When I'm done with that, I click OK, and I see what my selections look like. If I don't like these selections, I can undo them by simply clicking on the normal style and start all over again. Let's undo this reset to normal with Control Z and put these styles back in that I had set and say they are now something I want to keep. If so, I drop down the gallery listing and at the bottom I select create new style and give it a name. Okay, I've given it a name, click OK and 
Presto! I now have a new style I can use whenever I want. If I want this style to be available in all of my new documents and not just the one document in which I created it, what I need to do is right click on that style, select modify, and then direct that it be applied to all new documents based on the current template. Paragraph, character, and link styles are the most common styles used in Word. However, there are several other types of styles available in Word, the most significant of which is table styles. I believe that should be a topic for another video. I think this is about it for this video today, but it's a lot. It's been a lot. Hopefully, it will help. We covered what styles are. We covered how to select and use them. We covered how to modify existing styles. We covered how to create new styles that you can use in all your documents. You can help the Davis Tutorial channel and encourage me to continue making more of these videos. First, by sharing this video. Send it out to anyone you know who uses Word. Put it up on Facebook, put it on Instagram, put it on Twitter, or just send it in a link to somebody else via email. Second, click that thumbs up button. This lets the YouTube robots know that there were more viewers who thought this was a valuable and worthwhile video. Next, leave us a comment down in the comment section below. Let us all know how you plan to use what you've learned here, and let me know what tutorials you'd like to see here in the future. If you're already a subscriber to David's Tutorials, then thank you. I appreciate every single one of you. And if not, why not go ahead and subscribe right now? Click that subscribe button and then the bell icon, and you'll be notified by YouTube whenever we post another great tutorial here on David's Tutorials.